Well, hey everybody, I'm Karis. Welcome to Unmasked, where we talk about real struggles, but we offer real hope. I know so many times for us, we all deal with things that are hard and things at times that we feel no one else deals with, but that's what we talk about here on this show. We want to acknowledge the struggles and the hurts that you may be dealing with and to let you know you're not the only one and there is hope. We're so glad to have you here on Unmasked. Just to let you know, you can find many great shows on My Coleman TV on Spectrum 180, Facebook Live on Roku, and all the different podcast platforms. So many great places you can find us to find great information and great encouragement during this time. So here we are once again on remote location in my home. Uh, We are all trying to follow the rules that our governor has given us as we are in shelter in place for the next couple of weeks. But we wanted to continue to offer you some encouragement, some help, some advice, and just some community during this time. Social distancing is really hard, even for an introvert like me. I don't know about you guys, how you have felt about it, how you've been over the last couple of weeks, whatever day it is of quarantine for us, but here we are. And uh, we're going to walk through this together. So last week on our Unmasked episode, we talked about good, the good things that are happening around us in our community, in our country, and in our world. And this week, as we move through this crisis, as we move through this pandemic, you may be a parent at home and your roles are changing. You are working from home. Now your kids are at home and we have different things that we have to do. And so maybe your children are having a difficult time processing this crisis. I mean, look, we as adults are having a difficult time processing this, and maybe you need help to help your kids through this. So I want to give you four tips, four ways to help your kids through this crisis. Now, I don't have this figured out completely. Uh, Again, this is about being real and being honest, but I will tell you these are some things that have been helpful for us, for me, as I talk with my kids and help them through this time. You may be like us. You may have a wide range of ages in your home. You may have a toddler. You may have a first grader and fifth grader like me. You may have a senior in high school um, and a young child or a college student. All those ages can vary, but they still need help and guidance through this crisis. So the first thing in our four ways to help your kids uh, through this crisis, the first tip is to acknowledge their feelings. They need to know that it is okay to feel all the things that they are feeling. They need to know that it is okay to not be okay with the situation that is going on right now. We are facing something that, that we have never been through before, they have never been through before, and that emotional part of their brain and our brain is going crazy because it feels like it's got to do something to protect us. And so when that emotional part of our brain goes over 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 and over and over different things like it is, it gets overwhelming. So we begin to think of things in an angry way or a sad way or a fearful way or a worrisome way. So when that happens to our kids and they get inundated with those emotions and feel overwhelmed, that's hard and that's scary. So we want to acknowledge that what they are feeling is real. And many of us have been craving those conversations with our kids of different ages. And so here we have this chance, this moment to be a safe place, to be an open place for them where they can come and they can ask us questions and we can acknowledge what they are feeling and experiencing. Does that mean you have to have all the answers? Absolutely not. And that may actually make them feel better because they have no idea. They don't know the answers. And maybe if they know that you don't know the answers either and that's okay, then that's going to help them calm down. But they need to know that it is okay to feel what they're feeling. And they need to know that you are a place, you are a person that they can come to and acknowledge that. When uh, we dismiss feelings, or even you can think about it like this, when others have dismissed your feelings and told you, well, you just need to calm down. We don't need to worry about it. It's all going to work out. It's all going to be fine. Well, so that diminishes what they're feeling inside, and that makes them feel ashamed that, that they are worried, that they are confused, that they are scared. And so then that makes them kind of hide that and not want to deal with it. And we don't want them to begin now hiding those feelings. We want them to see the power of transparency. We want them to see that this is how we deal with things. We talk about it. We acknowledge what's there. We talk about the problem. And then we look for ways to find the solution. So acknowledge their feelings. 
Second, keep as much normalcy in your routine as possible. Let's go back to what we were doing a few weeks ago. We were getting up, right, by 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning, and we were getting ready for work and ready for school and drinking the coffee and making the lunches and packing the backpacks, and out the door we went. And then your kids, they knew their schedule in their classroom every day. They knew what was going to happen. For you and work, when you went to work, you knew what you were going to do in the morning, lunch, and then before you went home. So when they had that normalcy and they had that routine, even if they hated it, they are missing it right now because that consistency gave them confidence and it gave them control because they knew what was coming. So when we move away from that completely, it makes them feel out of control. It makes them feel uneasy because they don't know what the next steps are. So by keeping as much normalcy as possible, this will help them to feel more confident in the situation. So does that mean we have to get up as early as we were getting up? No, but we can ask them. We can say, tell me what you did during your school day. What did you do in the mornings? What did you do after lunch? And we can figure out those things and implement that into our schedule, into our plan, even if it was a morning snack and then they had recess or PE. So those are some things that we can do. We can have that morning snack and then have a recess and go outside and then we can have lunch. And then if they had math or, or their main school subjects after lunch, then that's when you can do their schooling. And the same for you in your work schedule, trying to keep it as consistent with what you had as possible will help you have that confidence and that control that you can have in the situation because we know we cannot control everything right now, but to control the things that we can will give our kids the confidence that they need through this inconsistent season. Uh, third, we need to keep them on a need-to-know basis. Now, our kids, and I would even say that we as adults, we do not need to know everything that the news is uh, posting 24 seven. And we've talked about that a lot over the last few weeks. It is constant. The news feed is constant. Your social media feeds, it is constant. And a lot of it, that's what is coming out, is, is not fact-based. It is opinion-based and it is fear-based. So it is very important that we do not share all of this with our kids. If we are struggling with what is being said about this pandemic, and we can't wrap our brains around it, it's going to cause more trauma to them and to their minds. Um, if they're sitting beside us and we're scrolling that social media feed and we're clicking on those stories, nine times out of ten, they're reading it with us. And do we want them reading those opinions? Do we want them reading those um, fear-filled stories that we're in front of? Probably not. And you may have a range of kids. You may have a three-year-old at home and a 16-year-old at home. So then you can look at what can my child handle right now. Your 16-year-old can handle so much more than your three-year-old. And I promise you, as the saying goes, ignorance is bliss. It's okay to keep our kids in that, in that part, in that situation where they don't know everything. Because it's okay for them to not know everything. Because we don't want to cause trauma um, or fear to them when they look back on this situation more than likely they're going to look at it and they're going to see my mom and dad spent lots more time with me or I was able to go play outside more get more rest and we weren't busy all the time our schedules weren't so packed they're going to see a lot of the good if that's what we allow them to see so and we want to make sure in uh, being careful with what they see in this need to know basis how we communicate things to them so for example if your schools have moved to online learning um, and you have young children, acknowledge their feelings. If they're sad and upset about it, that is okay. Acknowledge their feelings. But instead of saying something like, well, school is over, school's been canceled, you don't get to see your friends anymore for the rest of the school year. Well, that's hard to process as a first grader or third or fourth grader even. So what you could do is, is reframe that and say something like, school is going to move to a new way of learning for the rest of this school year. For April and May, we're moving to an online learning, so we're going to uh, work with your teacher in a different way. No, we will not be in a physical classroom setting, but we're going to get to see your friends and your teacher in a new way, and we're going to make this as fun and easy as possible. So by reframing that and telling them what they need to know, then that's going to help them be more calm in the situation. They don't need to know the, all the lines or all the details behind 
what's going on with that. They just need to know um, very little information is that to, to, again, give them that control, give them that peace and give them that calmness that, okay, I don't like this situation, but we're going to learn in a new way and we're going to make the best of it. And so that will help them to work through it. And then the last one, the fourth one, this has been, like I said, these are ways that have helped us through this crisis. So I just want to encourage you to try some of these ways as well. So the fourth one for us um, has been our faith. Our faith in, in God to know that even though this, circ this circumstance and this situation is uncertain, He is not. He is a certain God. He is able to handle this. Nothing is too hard for Him. This did not catch Him off guard. It caught us off guard, but it did not catch Him off guard. And He is with us. And He is going to bring good. He brings good out of every situation. And we can look to Him and trust Him. And as I have gone through this time and gone through this situation, I've seen people come together. Like never before, we are looking for ways to serve one another. We are looking to, for ways to be the hands and feet to this world. And we are looking for ways to offer hope. And that's what we want to give our kids. We want them to know that there is hope in this situation, that this season will end and good things are coming. No, we can't see it, but that's the thing about faith. We walk not by what we see, but by that faith and knowing of what will come, what will be. So we want to teach our kids to do that. And I know I've shared with you before some scriptures that have been helpful for us, but Psalms 91 has been one um, that, that we pray over protection for God's protection. Philippians 4, 13, for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We can do this. And that's what we can tell our kids. We can take this one day at a time. We don't have to look at the whole thing for the next, you know, couple of weeks or the next month. Let's just look at one day. And, and through the strength of Jesus, we can make it. We can work through this. So those have been helpful for us to just look at scripture, to look to God, to pray, to seek him in this time, and to just kind of pivot and, and, release because we have to trust him in this situation and that's been helpful for us to know that that God is on our side he is helping us he is listening to our prayers so we can pray and talk to him about little things and big things and that's important for your kids to know that that God is listening to their prayers about the little and about the big it's important to him it's important to us it's important to him so use these four things remember to acknowledge their feelings to keep your schedule and routine with as much normalcy for them as possible. Keep them on a need-to-know basis and allow them to see your faith and your prayer and to teach them to do the same thing. And when we walk in these four things, we will see that as we are helping our kids navigate through this crisis, these four things are going to help us navigate this crisis as well. So thank you guys for joining us here on Unmasked. You can find me on karasnyder.com. If you are feeling anxious about the situation and needing some help or guidance, you can also uh, go to booksamillion.com and check out uh, my devotional, Anxiety Elephants, 31 Days to Stomping Out the Anxiety. I know many are feeling that. Um, so that may be a good place for you to get that devotional or many places locally have it. And you can support those small businesses and shop with them online or curbside pickup. So thank you all for joining us today and we'll be back next week.